Hi guys, welcome to Honey and Spice Sessions. I am Bolu Babalola and I'm gonna be sitting here with four of my friends to discuss all things Honey and Spice, romance, relationships, rom-coms, what they feel about romance, their favorite their favorite movies, what's how they celebrate romance. It's gonna be really, really fun. We're gonna be making sweet and spicy cocktails because Honey and Spice is obviously sweet and spicy. The love between Kiki and Malachi is sweet and spicy and I really hope you enjoy it. Pre-order it, it's open right now, and it features a thong song, fake dating, friendship, um, some steam. I know I'm biased, but I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Hi guys, welcome to Honey and Spice Sessions with me, Bolu Babalola. I've always wanted to like be a newsreader, so this is, like, <laughs> really, this is really fun for me. And I'm talking to my friends about all things love and romance, and here I am with the amazing Kayla Bazuma Nelson, who wrote Open water, if you haven't read that yet, what are you doing with your life? Please read it now. Um, and we are making cocktails, we're making picantes. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm yeah? good, I'm well. How are you keeping? Good? I'm well. I'm making cocktails with my friends on a Monday morning. So I'm really there well. Were, there were worse things yeah, to be doing. Yeah, there are worse things to be doing. So Honey and Spice is, you know, it's about romance and it's about really male and female perspectives mm -hmm. on romance and how they approach different things and how they see different things and mm -hmm. how it affects that, that dynamics in terms of communication. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really broad and direct question, <laughs> but generally, what do you think men can do better within, in the sphere of romance? Yeah. What do you think they can do better in terms of communication? I mean, because he writes love really, really well. So I'm presuming you must be really good at it. So here's like a really easy example. Okay, right? okay. You told me to chop and I just started chopping randomly. Okay. I didn't ask you what I needed to do. <laughs> you didn't listen. Yeah, right, okay. What is it? Patriarchy. <laughs> do you know what? Like something I've been thinking about a lot in terms of how I communicate with women in general, not yeah. just my partner, but thinking about like communication styles mm. and how often men generally will say something without saying anything. Yes. Will just be like, and then when you get pulled up on it, they're like, but I said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't say anything in yeah, the first place. Yeah. Like, what's what, going on? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think that men often like say stuff with subtext when it could be more specific. Yeah, it's weird. And people always say that, you know, like women are more complicated, but like men, I'm just like, just say what you mean. Say what you mean. I think also a lot of it comes generally, I find. Mm -hmm from like fear of emotional intimacy. I mm -hmm. see, uh, with my friends as well, I see when men feel like they're falling in love, they just start to freak out. They start, and I'm like, you are obsessed with this woman. And it's now that like, you're starting to act up. It's like, oh no, I'm vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to do about it. And I just start acting in ways that's not necessarily like kind of aggressive or uh, whatever to the woman, but it's, it's in a way, it's emotionally withdrawing in a yeah. way that is, that feels very hurtful if you're yeah. the person on the receiving end of it, even though it's not intentional. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, does that, where does that, is that, is it fear? And if so, I'm not I'm like I'm telling you to answer for all men, but <laughs> generally what your opinion, is it fear? And if so, where does the fear come from? I know that sometimes I have, I have like, not necessarily, withheld, mm -hmm. I've hidden in relationships because I mm -hmm. haven't known what language I could use to express my right. emotions. And I think if I don't get the right language from the jump, yeah. then I'm going to be misunderstood. So and if I'm misunderstood, get it right. yeah, it's yeah. like, it's almost like a, in a weird sort of way, it's almost like a fear of failure. Mm. It's like, and then that kind of relates to the sense of self. Yeah. Like it's, I guess it's like not really knowing that you can like completely be vulnerable yeah. around someone and, yeah. and really trust them in that space. It's true. And I feel like that's also linked to masculinity. It's like, I have to get this right. Because yeah. if yeah, I don't yeah, get this yeah, right, yeah. the fear of failure is a massive thing. Like yeah. I have to be successful yeah. in everything that yeah. I do. But thing is, romance demands, love especially demands vulnerability. Yes. And that's not, that's an inherently imperfect thing. And I think it's something that you really hit on in Open Water. Like how did you find what did you learn about love and romance while writing Open Water? Because when I was when I was writing Honey and Spice, I learned so much about myself mm -hmm. and also what I seek in a partnership. I think when you write romance, you kind of have to excavate what are my desires and kind of I just project them into the book, basically. <laughs> well, I guess it's because you're spending time with yourself. Yeah, with myself. And, like... and even like, figuring out who the characters are demands me knowing myself as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I figured, you know, I want kindness yes. and also somebody who listens yes. and 
and I want that friction and that playfulness. But yeah. what did you learn from, you know, about love from Open Water, writing Open Water? I guess that, that idea of vulnerability mm. and how important it is and necessary yeah. for a relationship to function. Yeah. Um, and then also thinking about this idea of grace. Oh my gosh, it's like, so important, isn't it? Like, so often I'm like, yeah. I guess think, speaking to that idea of like failure, it's like, mm -hmm. if you know that you're in a space where you can just get things wrong and also that you'll afford each other like this sense of grace, yeah. like working... Because like, you're always working stuff out in a relationship, whether it's yeah. been like a year or it's been 10. These are two people like yeah. trying to meld your lives together. That's a huge, huge thing. Yeah. 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 I really loved writing Kiki and Malachi's report, just how mm. they communicate because they are best friends and they joke together and they see each other. And mm. when Malachi has a thing of like not wanting to open up, Kiki's like, okay, fine, I'm just going to sit here until you're ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just knowing that person is like, I like you and I want to be there for you yeah, and not yeah. kind of internalizing every single thing like, oh, it's against me. But I think that's linked to actually allowing somebody to know you. That's 100%. the scariest part. It's, not... <laughs> it's scary. It's very scary. Do you think that you need to have a, a sort of friendship foundation in yeah. a relationship? For that's, my, to... that's my thing. That's my thing. Like, I really want to like you as a person because yeah. like, that's the thing that matters. Yeah. You know, if you if this is for the long haul, mm -hmm. I really have to like who you are fundamentally because even when we're arguing and we're saying things that we don't necessarily mean mm -hmm. and we're speaking from like an emotionally combative or aggressive place, I need to know who you are if we're going to survive this. I yeah, know that yeah, this yeah. is just a reaction and it's not who you are. Yes. And um, we're going to get through this. So I think friendship is really important. And also humour, because for me, so much of my friendships are based on humour and like liking each other, liking, laughing at the same things yes. and connecting with that. And yes. so it's really key for me to like write. And I really enjoyed writing the report as well. Like the mm -hmm. way they joke and they flow with each other because mm -hmm. I feel like it's like the souls are melding, you know. And when you meet somebody that like you feel that, that it's almost like an electric, visceral thing because it's so rare. Yeah. It's so yeah. rare. Um, what is your favourite thing about writing love? That's a good question. <laughs> I feel like it's... For me, it's like the build up. Yes. You know that sense of that sense of electricity that you're yeah. talking about. The Mine like too. Back and forth yeah. and the like just kind of knowing that perhaps these people might come together. Yeah. It's like it's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. Because that's like yeah, because I feel like I've definitely written characters who like I've realized actually that like, maybe these people need to yeah. diverge. Maybe they don't need to be so Yeah. Um, go go in and yeah, come back together. Yeah. But yeah. I love the build up. And I love when it actually comes together. Because it it's so rewarding. Yeah. It's so fun to write when they actually get back, get together. Do men do this? Yeah, 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 I, do, you, do you show texts to each other and be like, what, yeah, what does this mean? Yeah, like my <laughs> really? closest friend and I, like, yeah, we, we, we do that all the Okay, time. it's good to know. <laughs> because the group chat is like, okay, it's a council. And we're like, okay, guys, so this sentence, this full stop, right? Mm -hmm. Is it severe <laughs> or is it is it just because he's like 35? Like, what is the, <laughs> there's no emoji. So what, where, 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 where are we going with this? So we really do like an analytical forum yeah. to understand what the texts are saying. But I feel like my, like, my Should closest friend and I, yeah, go on ahead, go on ahead. My closest friend and I will like masquerade as if we're not trying to work stuff out. Oh, that's so interesting. So we'll be like, we'll go back and forth and we're like, yeah. so yeah, like this text message came and then we'll make a joke about it and eventually we'll, and we'll get to and it. Like, so so you, no, like, what did you actually Oh, so think? there has to be like a premise. Five more, five more. Okay, so Open Water is full of musical references, artistic mm -hmm. references. It's one of my favourite things about it, apart from obviously the writing. So... Is there an author, or musician, or artist that has perfectly describes love to you or inspires you? And also, how many shots have I put in right now? Three. Three. three okay. Three, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, three more. Okay, go on. Sorry. Um, I feel like definitely Barry Jenkins. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Oh, his work is so like beautiful. beautiful and so tender. So tender. So, so tender and always makes me really think of like how expansive love can be, mm -hmm. you know. Even in the darkness, because, you know, Bill Street is not exactly, you know, <laughs> happy all the time, but there's joy in it. How does he do that? I have no idea. Please pass the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's just a real sense of warmth to his yeah. work, which just so like, warmth. yeah. Um, yeah. And then I always think of Barry Jen uh not Barry, Frank Ocean. Oh my gosh, like, one of my favorite musicians. Just the, the songwriting's crazy. 
just like I can just like listen to. Sometimes I listen to the melody and his voice, and then sometimes it's a listen where I'm just listening to the words because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's so gorgeous and so vivid as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, Honey and Spice, Honey and Spice has a lot of musical references, and there is. I don't want to spoil it, but there is a direct naked reference to Frank Ocean because I'm just like, he just describes love perfectly. And it's like, also his voice and the lyrics together, just, it's just, I don't know, it's so vivid, it's so beautiful. It really is. What about you? Yeah, pretty much the same references actually. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I go to, it's so in R&B generally. I always, I mean, everyone loves 90s. R&B and so I feel like mm-hmm. that's a general mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. but for me I really just go back and like listen to the words because mm-hmm. also in terms of masculinity something's missing in the R&B boys today guys because the R&B boys of the of the 90s were on their knees in the rain they were doing something different you know they were doing something pleading different. they were like Drew Hill were jumping up and down <laughs> doing aerobics <laughs> singing about their love for a woman like just like I mean usually they'd messed up but it's also the fact that like oh I really want to be with you like a mm. naked desire that wasn't just physical it's like yeah, i yeah, love yeah. you it wasn't coming through anything yeah. it didn't feel like it had to be like oh like i kind of yeah love you. exactly like like, it was yeah. no fr- there was no front end yeah yeah and even in the song front end you know even like jay-z says you know normally i'd ask i'll act so nonchalant like it's a it's, a, it's acknowledgement like you know yeah. i used to play but like this yeah, is how this i is, feel yeah 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 and yeah and i just love the music and it puts me in a great place and it really i think I think inadvertently, it was kind of an inspiration for Malachi because Malachi is somebody who, this boy wears his heart on his sleeve. Like, Mm -hmm. he seems like a player, Mm -hmm. you know, he's a really saucy Euro man from South London. Like, which part of South London? I didn't really, I think he's from Brixton. He's from Brixton. He's from Brixton. He's from Brixton. I know know guys like that. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. he's really saucy. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) Turn to read Honey and Spice. Uh, He's really, he's really sexy and he's really like confident. Mm -hmm. But he's soft, right? Yeah. He's really soft. Mm-hmm. And when he's in the safe space with Kiki, he mm-hmm. allows himself to be soft. And I think that was very much inspired by like the 90s R&B. Like he's like, I want, Kiki's very much eventually, he's eventually, very much the fuck boy in the relationship, <laughs> eventually. Like she, not to spoil anything, but she's very much, I mean, she's a Yoruba woman as well. And mm-hmm. we are very hard nosed. I'm very scared to be vulnerable because mm-hmm. um, it's a protection mechanism. Mm-hmm. But I really, it was really important for me to write a black man who is, who isn't necessarily, once he's tapped into his emotions, he's not afraid of them. And mm-hmm. he's very bold with it. Um, and I found that really special when I read Hope, Open Water as well. Cause I was like, oh, this is a man that's like, he's just so like in love and he's mm-hmm. very in touch with his emotions and also wants to know his emotions. I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of men are just like, run away from it, you know? I'm shaking it up. I'm shaking it up like Malachi shook Kiki's heart up. (laughs) So do you think there's kind of um, a gap between how men are shown in media in terms of rom-coms and books and to how they act in real life? And do you think that kind of affects expectations of romance? Because I try to write realistic men. I think Malachi's mm-hmm. a realistic man. Mm-hmm. I would say that, but I do think he is. But do you think generally there's like a, you know, juncture between that, disjuncture? I feel like there's definitely like an idealised version mm-hmm. on both sides. Like this yeah. idea of like men kind of being a bit aloof and a little yeah. bit kind of like step back and men, women being like the people who are mm. like going towards it and that kind of pull and tug being the basis yeah. of a, of yeah, a and like combo a man spots. basically acting like he doesn't like you yeah, and then like, that's like yeah yeah you're absolutely right it's I don't fun like, for anyone <laughs> not fun of... for anyone and I, that's why it was really key for me for like Kiki to Kiki and Malachi to like like each other but yeah. like like we said the friendship thing yeah, is really yeah, important yeah. to me and I wanted them to be like oh I get why they like each other and I get why they click um and I get why they have chemistry yeah it's not fun for a guy to like just treat you mean, like treat you mean, and then you're like, oh my gosh, maybe he likes you. No, 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 no. It's not. It's not. Was it's there not anyone that. that you had in mind when you were writing? Um, I, I was writing my ideal man who I've not met yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, actually, no. Realistically, I think he was pulled from a lot of great men in my life and great men that mm. I've known in my life, mm-hmm. with some like who I would want to be with, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So. But ultimately, it was just writing somebody who's... Because the character that I worked with first was Kiki. Mm-hmm. And I built this girl up, and she's vulnerable, but she's but she has her guards up, and she's tough, but she's very sweet. Mm-hmm. And 
can love hard and she's scared to love. And mm. I was thinking, okay, what's the kind of guy that will suit this girl? Yeah. It's a guy that has sauce, that has banter, but it's also kind and patient mm. because she can be, I don't want to say abrasive, but she can be very like, it comes off as abrasive sometimes because she's just trying to protect herself mm. and she's been hurt in the past. And I think I wanted somebody who can who just sees past all of them, like, oh, I know you, you're really sweet and you're yeah, funny. Yeah. And you don't need to do that here. Just mm. giving her the safe cool. space. And I think it was more about creating a partner that like, I think we should all have, you know, mm. you know, somebody who knows us, de depending on who we are, just somebody who kind of suits who we are and also challenges us because somebody who can make us better. I think we write, we focus a lot on them getting along and they should get along. But part of getting along is, I don't think you should do that. And you're hiding and I see you mm. and you need to stop that right now. Mm. I think that's mm. also part of love, you know. On the subject of love, I have this game called Rom Com Rumble. Okay. And I think there's just a bunch of movies in here and we're mm. gonna just discuss them. So, Boom. take your pick. Sex Education. I love Sex Education. I love Sex Education, especially the last season. The last season was so great. What yeah. did you love about the last season? It just felt really, it felt a lot more like open. Mm -hmm. Like it felt like this sense of like all of the characters were more willing to Yeah, there was explore. a lot of growth, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, I yeah. loved it. I really love sex education and its depiction of romance. And you know, there's something about a high school romance where everything is heightened and focused like, and you just, you're just in the world. It's yeah. just what I love writing about young people. Like obviously they're not in high school, Kiki and Malachi are in university. But in the campus setting or campus or setting where you're like, you're all thrown together, emotions are so heightened. So heightened. And it's such a great prism to see romance and see the vulnerability of it all and concentrate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That's what I really love about sex, sex education. Who's your favorite character on sex education? It's hard, isn't it? Because they're all great. They're all great. <laughs> Eric. Eric. I mean, I knew you were going to say Eric. I mean, Eric is amazing. <laughs> I mean, and fantastic. I love his growth. You know, and it's good that he it didn't feel like he was just he came in and it's just stagnant. No, exactly. Like, he really got an up. And like you know, I know he technically cheated, but like I was like, all of us were sat there yeah, like, like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I was like, baby boy, do your thing. It's I terrible. felt like a big sister. I was like, babe, it's okay. It's okay. You're finding yourself, and I think it was really important to see him exploring itself in a place where it was like it was so safe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was surrounded by black people, and he's discovering. His sexuality as a black man, yes. as a gay black man, yes, as a Nigerian yes, yes, black yes. man. I think that was so powerful. So yeah, I really loved, I really loved that. And even though, you know, it's not necessarily a long-term relationship, I think it, you really hones in on the fact that sometimes you meet people and that connection, even though it's fleeting, is still very much real. It, and that's okay. And that's okay. that's okay. It doesn't have to last yeah, yeah, forever. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's also the beauty of romance as well, you know? That's a great one. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pick one who's, now. Who's your favorite character? I think I, I think Eric it is well. Eric. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it is Eric, actually. Yeah, I just I would watch the Eric show. I would, I really would. <laughs> I would. Uh, David Nichols is one of my favorite authors. Brilliant. The way he writes about romance and love was so inspiring to me, and it, it it's hundred percent one of my inspirations when I write because it's so full of warmth. And even though one day is sad, not to spoil it for anyone, it still makes me feel really happy to go and reread because their love was real and their friendship was real. Oh man. And they grew up together and also it's a great portrayal of how sometimes you need to grow apart to grow back together. Yeah. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you need to figure out who you are without that person, have a whole life without that person. Yes. And then come back and have your love be stronger, you know? Yeah. Sometimes love stories work that way. Sometimes, you know. You know? I love what I love about his writing is this sense of possibility. Yes, always. Hope, right? Even when they're like at yeah. a distance, even when they're, it's they're just doing, fizzing in yeah, the background. It's just constant, it's constant. It's just really, really great. Yeah. yeah. Love One Day. Is there another book of David Nichols that you really love? Or speaking of books, any other book? Ooh. Do you know what his, reading One Day was like a kind of, was maybe the first romance book that I read. That's maybe so when I was like, yeah, one of my friend's mums gave it to me. I was like, you're gonna really? love this, yeah. And so it's, like, I've, still got it on, I've still got it on the bookcase. I've got this kind of like so orange edition with their, like, I think it's like their two faces kind of oh my coming together. And I love it. Yeah, it's like a big one for me. It's same, same, yeah. same. It's just so beautiful and, and so romantic. And I think I'm always trying to get to the point of like, I want this book to be like one day. Want, yeah. yeah. It's the, the back and forth, the back and it's forth. like, the spacing of time between them as well. Yeah. It just feels so perfect. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is gonna be a sequel. 
<laughs> Mark can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what inspired me wanting to write a sequel for Honey and Spice because I just felt like this was the beginning of their love. And mm -hmm. they're young adults right now. And mm -hmm. I really wanted to see, I didn't really want to leave Kiki and Malachi. I wanted to see how their relationship would develop as they grow into more fully formed people. Because you know, when we're at uni, we're still figuring out who we are. And this isn't to devalue their love, that love is absolutely real, but mm. it's gonna go through something when you, it's almost like a new adolescence, you mm. know, when you grow mm. up and mm. you're learning things about yourself and mm. you actually have to be out in the real world, it changes, it you know? It really does. So um, yeah, it's a big inspiration for me. As you were talking about books about love, I thought of The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. I don't oh, know I love that. that book. Oh, gosh, that I book, love that book. It's like, it's just got everything. It's got everything, it's got everything. and it's got romance. And it's, and even when, again, even when it's like darker, there's still this sense of hope and possibility yeah. in it, you yeah. know? Yeah. And also self-knowledge. I love, like, I don't just want to write about romance. I want to write about people, especially women, loving mm. themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that's really, really important. Um, and I think self-love goes hand in hand with romance for me. Yeah. It really does. I think some, something that I really love about romance writing that for me feels really good is this sense of having two people who occupy separate spaces, yes. who can actually like kind of own themselves in those yeah. spaces and then and come, they come together. together. That's yeah. powerful. Yeah. You want somebody that matches you, you know? Yeah. Also, like I am inspired by the Beyonce song, Upgrade You, and I'm like, you know what, yeah. <laughs> Even though you have all that, I'm gonna be an addition <laughs> to your life. I feel like love should be like, it should just be like a like something on top of, like a cherry on top of a very full life. It can't be the substance of your whole life. Otherwise, it's just like, it's not fair to you or the other person, you know? You have to love yourself. First. We have to love ourselves. Let's cheers, yeah. let's cheers to that. Just, just to loving yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Kayla. This was Thanks. so much fun. I hope you learned something about masculinity and romance and finding somebody who you can actually, you know, share a space with and connect with and like, fundamentally like. Yeah. There we go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.